Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Karen Marsdale and I'm on staff at the Greater Reading Chamber Alliance and you're watching another episode of our Member Spotlight in which we have time to talk about and visit with members of our organization. It's really fun because we have so many different varieties of businesses and different sectors of businesses. So today with me I'm very thrilled because if bright young woman, um, Courtney Nine, who is um, one of the founders, co-founder, mm -hmm. president yes. of um, the, the, the Good Life Companies. Yes, we've rounded up now, the companies now. Yes, because now you've changed a little <laughs> yes. bit from, from good, good Life Financial, which yeah. is sort of stuck in my brain. But yes. anyway, so Courtney, welcome. Yes. Thank, thank you, you for, for being me. here. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I'm sorry you had to come in a April day when it happens to be snowing, oh, so, yeah. but you know, who knows, it's Berks County. Anyway, we'll get right to the to, to the topic, and that is, you know, you've got kind of a little different style, I guess, mm -hmm. or philosophy, um, yes. you know, in terms of, of the work you do. Yes. Um, I, you know, just, you know, when we talk about financial advisors, and everyone should have one, mm -hmm. and everyone should be thinking about their finances, I always yes. say that and preach to the younger, um, kids that work for me about you know their 401k and you know taking advantage of that but talk a little bit about what your philosophy is yes um, we myself and my business partner we um, started out as financial advisors when we were young we were about 21 22 years Ooh. old he was actually younger he was 19 years old when he got licensed um, shortly after his father passed away so for a lot of people getting into the business sometimes there's a triggering event that drives you to get you into the business. Um, you know, for me, I just had, you know, family that wasn't always, you know, the most transparent about where things were financially. Um, and I just think that it, there's a lot of conversation that has to happen between, you know, husband and wife as to what's going on. Um, so everyone's on the same page and sometimes communication gets missed along the way and it creates a bigger issue. So um, that's kind of how I got into the business for my business partner. His father had passed away and he took his father's life insurance che check to an advisor at Merrill Lynch. And the advisor said, it's not enough money. We can't work with you. So there he was, you know, 18, actually 17 year old kid at the time, didn't have anyone to help him. Um, so he relied on his college advisor at Alvernia, who was a um, financial advisor at the time, and he oh, ended up getting him into the business um, and said, we're going to get you licensed and you're going to learn how to do this business. So we joined up back in um, 2007 after I graduated from Syracuse. and. We built our business at Waddell and Reed and we had a really good career there, but we just felt that we had a calling to do more. Um, we couldn't always do everything that we wanted to do as entrepreneurs and that's really who we are at the, at the core as uh, entrepreneurs. So we wanted to market differently. We wanted to approach the industry differently. Um, we wanted to be able to help other advisors and just do more. So we started Good Life Financial Advisors back in um, 2012 and it was really a platform for us to take our advisors, I'm sorry, take our clients that were in a captive product environment at Waddell & Reed where we can only buy and sell what was available to us on the platform. So we couldn't do everything we wanted to do and we went to an open uh, open platform at an independent broker dealer and we more or less had the world open to us, but it was also complicated because we weren't able to, um, we didn't have someone telling us what to do. So we really had to create systems and processes and things like that on our own. And we realized that more advisors would probably go in the independent route if they had a backbone and they had a back office to be able to support them. Um, you know, most advisors aren't really thrilled with the, the companies that they're at, um, but they get a lot of support and it's hard to undo where they're at and move their clients over. So once we moved our clients over and they had access to independent advice, we decided let's start a di different company catered towards moving advisors out of um, their environment and help them become independent. So that's essentially what we did. And we looked at all areas of the business from helping them find real estate to helping them move their clients, um, help them do marketing, help them, um, you know, just learn how to be an independent advisor. But really, they didn't have to do the things that required time away from their clients. They could mm -hmm. focus on their clients and allow our firm to really be the backbone and support them. So uh, we started bringing advisors along into our local office and then it grew from there and we opened up our first office in Pittsburgh in 2013. And then from there, it just has grown and we're now in almost 38 different cities around the country and have about 90 advisors. Now, I so. did not realize that. I learned yes. something today yes. about you. Yes. So you have 
We wow. Have, yeah, yeah, we're around uh, around 80 advisors um, in, yeah, 38 cities around the country. It's about 20 different states. So. That's really quick, mm -hmm. and that's really fast growth. It's fast growing, yeah. Once word kind of got out, and we have a full-time business development officer, and my partner Connor does a lot of that work as well, um, you know, we were really able to accelerate the growth. And there's a lot of advisors that are craving this type of um, setup. They just needed to be able to find us, and we need to be able to find them. So, so how do you yeah. do that? How do you do that? Um, that matching, if you will. Of yeah, the we have a, a database that has um, probably twenty to thirty thousand different financial advisors in it. So we utilize utilize a lot of mass email marketing campaigns and um, just a lot of cold calling and relationship building. And now it's to the point where. Every advisor that we bring over knows another advisor that would want to come with. So the growth is really accelerated. Okay, so um, essentially this is why it's the um, Good Life Companies because yes. you you have this kind of um, you know different platform, if you mm -hmm. will. Yes. Um, you know you're still advising, but you're also um, building this other network of advisors. network of advisors that really you know operate. So you, you you really and you've had to kind of grow from sort of the, you know, ground up in terms mm -hmm. of, like you said, the, poli the, the processes, et cetera, yeah. because I certainly know that your industry is heavily regulated. It's very heavily regulated. You know. Yeah, we um, ended up becoming our own registered investment advisor in 2014, so we're now handling all the compliance aspect of it for our advisors as well. Oh, so. oh, the, the yeah. compliance stuff the compliance, is, yeah, yeah. 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 Is, is challenging. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you've done a lot in a short period of time. Yes. And so, you know, how do you find, um, you know, again, obviously, highly successful, mm -hmm. great growth. Yes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit in a moment about mm -hmm. how the chamber, mm -hmm. um, GRCA, as we um, are now known, um, might have helped you in some, in some um, instances. But um, so how do you, you're young, you've got two children, you've got a dog. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, you're obviously very, very active. How do you find that balance? Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. You know, a lot of uh, our employees, we now have about 30 employees full time. Um, and a lot of them, I think, look up to me. Um, I try to stay calm, cool, and collected and just try to, you know, manage whatever challenge is coming at me in that moment. Um, and a lot of times, you know, our business is very mobile and sometimes that's good and bad. You can't really get away from it, but it's good in the sense that we can always be available to mm -hmm. our clients. And it's almost like, it's not like I have my work life and I have my life at home. And while I do, they kind of very much intertwine. Sure. Um, and there's, you know, if my kids are sick and it's the middle of the day, I can be with them. But if it's at night and an advisor or a client needs me, I can be with them too. So it's, I've just tried to mesh the two together and just try to find that, that perfect harmony. Um, so we're always on, I guess you could say. There's never I any think off, that, and that's, yeah. that's okay, because I love it. Yeah. I love what we do. So. Well, I think that that's part of it too. You know, when you have a passion for what you do, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're kind of not, you're working and you're working hard, but it doesn't feel quite as, right. you know, as laborious. So I know we're almost out of time, which yep. typically happens yes. um, in these sessions. But so tell me quickly, because I know we had a little bit of a story beforehand yeah. about how we did help you at the yes. Chamber. The Chamber's been instrumental um, in actually helping us stay with our headquarters in Berks County. Um, we travel all around the country. We have advisors all around the country. So we see what cities like Greenville, um, South Carolina are doing, and they're providing tax benefits for companies to relocate there and provide jobs. Um, but it was important. I was born and raised in Berks County. Um, my father has a business and I've just always been around in this community. And so it was important for us to stay here. Um, and the chamber was able to help us secure a loan, um, a PETA loan, Pennsylvania, I guess, yeah. Industrial Development Act. Um, I think that's what it was. Uh, through, um, through that organization to purchase the old Lazy Boy building in Shillington. And we are now um, almost done renovating about 24,000 square feet. Um, and we're going to be moving in there at the end of May. And we've got another entity that birthed out of this, which is the Good Life Fitness Institute. Um, the, we have a full um, functioning fitness center inside of the building for clients to be able to come in and utilize along with our uh, employees and our advisors. Whoa! So, yeah. That's, that is just amazing. Yeah. That We're marrying uh, good life equals health and wealth. Yes. That's become our mantra. Oh, so we want to make sure that there's 
synergy between your your physical wellness and your financial oh, wellness. Oh gosh, so. that that's very cool. Yes. That's very cool, and and I'm thrilled that we could help you. Yes. Um, and that you know our our staff that um, Deb Millman and, yep. and the gang do a great job. And I think again, here's a company that decided to keep its roots right here in Berks County. Yes. Because um, you know because you 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 like the area. Yeah, we love it here. So well, thank you, Courtney, for being thank here. You. It's great to talk to you and. Um, Keep it up because I can't wait to come back again and talk about the the next thirty eight um, yes. cities that you're going to be you're going to be um, um, wandering into, and yeah. um, you know pretty soon it's going to be um, global. So yeah. that's really that's very cool. Well, thank you for thank being you for here, me. and we appreciate your 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 time. Yeah. Thank you.